I have news, Excel is finally coming to Looker Studio. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online, helping you do more with data. So I must caveat this video by saying that what I'll be demonstrating is currently in preview only mode, so not yet the final version on general release. But as you've probably guessed by my introduction, a new Excel file data source connector is coming soon to Looker Studio. Now, as Excel is the most used data tool in the world, you might have expected an Excel connector to come as standard with Looker Studio. I know I did, but I assumed its absence thus far was more down to politics than technology. Whatever the reason, it's welcome news for all of us. So up until now, as Looker Studio users, if we wanted to work with our Excel data, we need to export it as a text or CSV file, and then use the upload file connector. So not ideal, but not the end of the world either. There's also another limitation when using this method that I'll talk about as we look at the new Excel connector and how it works. OK, let's jump in. So here in Looker Studio, I'll create a new data source and we can see the new Excel connector here in preview amongst the currently 24 free to use Google supplied data connectors. I select it and, as you'd expect, I'm now asked to choose my file to upload. We can see that there is a file size limit of 100 megabytes, which is pretty decent. Overall, you get 2 gigabytes of free storage, and if you need more, you'll need to upgrade to a Looker Studio Pro subscription. That is currently priced at $9 per user per month. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked. I'm going to click the upload button and choose my file. But before I do, let's look at some of the requirements and limitations on the files you upload. The header row must be a single row, so you can't have headers split out over more than one row. All cells within a column should be of the same type, so no mixing numbers with text, that kind of thing. Password protected files, macros and pivot tables are not supported. Other than that, you're good to go. So I'll select my sample superstore sales file. The file is uploaded, then processed. And we can now see the sheets contained within our Excel workbook. We have orders, returns and people. The first thing to note is that you can only connect to one sheet at a time. You can, of course, use data blending functionality to model the data by joining one or more sheets together, but you need to create a separate data source for each sheet. We also have this new button here. Basically, any Excel file you upload will be available to select here at any time you want to create a new Excel data source from that workbook. What this means in practice is that you won't need to re-upload the same file multiple times for each sheet you want to connect to within the same workbook, for example. I think this is helpful. So once I've selected the sheet I want to create a data source with, we then have these configuration options here on the right to choose from. First, we can choose to either include the full worksheet or just select a specific range within the sheet. This is great and brings me to one of the limitations of using the file upload connector, which is that any data you export from an Excel sheet would always need to start in cell A1. Next, we can choose to use the first row as the header row. I think in most cases this will be selected. If you uncheck this option, the field names will just use the column index, so A, B, C, D, etc. If your sheet contains hidden or filtered cells, you can choose whether to import them or not. You can specify rows that you don't wish to import. Perhaps there's an empty row between your header row and the first row of data, for example. And you can also choose not to import specific columns. Once these options have been configured, all that remains to do is to hit connect. You can name your data source here, but if you don't, Looker Studio automatically gives it the name of the file hyphen the sheet name, which in a lot of cases will actually be the best naming practice. 
So I hit connect and then go through the same process as you do with any other data source of checking the fields have the correct data type assigned, the default aggregation for each metric is correct, etc. From here, you can create a new report and add this data source to it. What I'm going to do first is to quickly create two more data sources for the remaining two sheets in the workbook so that I can show you how to blend them together in Looker Studio. I'll speed it up for you. And voila. I'm just going to jump in here to say that if you'd like to master Looker Studio, check out my full five hour course, The Ultimate Guide to Looker Studio, via the link in the description. OK, so here in my report, I've added the three separate data sources via this button here. And now I want to blend them. I'll add a table from the orders data to the report. And while it's selected, I'll hit blend data, which brings up this window here. We've got our orders data here as our first data source. And we can click here to join another table. I want to join returns for this example. Now I want to choose the fields to include from both sides of the blend. We already have the category and sales fields from the orders and the returned field from returns. I'll first want to add order ID from both sides as this is the joining key for the data. Next I'll add city, segment and ship mode. That's enough for this example. All of the fields appear here on the right hand side. Now I need to configure the join by clicking here. We choose the type of join, in our case a left join, and then make sure our joining key is correctly configured, then save. I can now add the returned field to my table and see the amount of sales that were returned. But rather than having both returned and non-returned values, I could add a filter to the table which would exclude any values from the return field that are null. And there we have just the returned figures, which also means I can now remove the returned field from the query. So what do you think of this new Excel connector? Does it meet your expectations or are there certain things you'd also like to see available? Personally, I think it's a really great addition to Looker Studio and should persuade even more people to pick it up as their BI tool of choice. After all, in my opinion, Looker Studio is already better than Power BI for business intelligence. Don't believe me? Then check out this video here and let me tell you why. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon for another video. Until then, bye.